Hello, everyone. It's that time again, but this time we have a little emergency. Let me try to show you. This is a fairly recent shirt that I have made. And like everything else that I wear, of course, it goes through the laundry. We had a little catastrophe right here. This beautiful Chinese fabric ended up getting torn, and which is a real disappointment. This is all but practically brand new. I made this shirt only last fall, so it was relatively new. And on this side, I think we're beginning to see the same thing happen. That's, it's, well, it's, that looks okay. It looks okay there, but if I patch one side, and I can, oh, I'm sorry, I get the wrong one. There it is. It's really bad. This is the rear of the shirt. It really got torn there, and it's getting torn there. So this fabric is apparently not suited for the kind of wash and wear that I do, especially with my bicycling and walking. Now, this must have been intended for, I gosh only knows what, what, maybe drapery or a gown that's worn only once and put in a museum. I don't know. So, what I'm going to try to do, this is going to be really tricky here. Let me get, go on. Let me give you a little bit closer, close up of this. Let's see how that looks there. Okay. Um, let's see now. Here. You can see that. There's the, oh boy. There's the tear right there. That's torn open there. So we're going to need a fairly decent sized piece of fabric to cover that. And for symmetry's sake, I have to do the same thing on the other side to keep symmetry with the garment. So let's see what we can find. <clears throat> well, let's try this. This is a fairly rugged, but yet Beautiful tapestry fabric. So, we're going to cut a piece that, and this appears to be looking at the scale here on the grid, going from, let's see, going from the base here up to about here, which makes that, let's see if it's that right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. To make it make sure everything covered, I'm gonna make it twelve inches long. So we have twelve inches long and to cover the whole thing. Unfortunately, we have to do it maybe see, this side is okay. So the blue is okay. If this flowery red silk is not okay. And make it, uh, say, three inches wide. I'm worried about that blowing it. That, you no, know, we're going to have to cover it. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. This is going to be really tricky because that's on a sleeve. I guess what we could do <clears throat> is make a piece 12 inches long, four inches wide, and we have to go into the sleeve. Unfortunately, we have to cover this whole thing up. So 12 inches wide, 12 inches long, four inches wide, with a half inch seam allowance, it will fold in and press underneath. So, let's do this. Twelve. We need two pieces. Twelve inches long and four, uh, five inches wide. So, let's fold it over. <clears throat> Something like that. And we need to get a straight edge where they go. Over here. Okay, so, um, let's see, okay. 
playing cut on this side. Well, that looks barely clean. No, 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 it's right there. So let's. Okay. I'm using a rotary cutter. A little bit quicker and can be more accurate than a pair of scissors. Now, I said 12 inches long, so add an inch. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Right there. So again, we count it. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. And the additional inch for seam allowance makes it out to about there. I'll give that a try, like that. Okay. Set that aside. And we set that one aside, and we get two pieces. It's actually folded, but we're going to do five inches. So, five, uh, let's see. One, 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 two, three, four, five, plus the allowance. And we're going to put that right about something like that. Okay, that takes care. We cut that off. And this is scrap, so we can discard that. And now we have two pieces, six by 13, okay? And they're fairly robust fabric. Now, what we're gonna do it now is press them. <clears throat> this is one of the few times I actually use an iron in my sewing. I'm going to take this, each one, figure out the good side, which is this side, and I'm gonna fold the good side toward the back side like that, and press it. That, I'm gonna create, that for this, so I'll be doing a top stitch on this side. So this would be a patch, not an integral part of the garment. So I want to keep, so I don't, instead of running it through the serger, and you have the serged seam across it, we're going to fold this under so it's already underneath. And that way I don't have to serge it. It will be in, folded inside, and um, so it won't fray. So right now I'm going to plug the iron in. Now what I had to do, I have to be careful because if I plug the iron into the same electrical outlet that all this junk carries on the sewing machine, I get the sewing machine, the computer, the sound mixer, the video switcher, the two cameras, and um, the lights and everything else, and I plug the iron in, I could very well pop the circuit breaker. So I've got an extension cord running out to the 20 amp electrical outlet in the kitchen. Now, the electrical outlets here in the living room actually get two computers running, and I've got the two computers, uh, two monitors, the laptop computer, two cameras, the sound mixing board, and the video switch, all running on a 15 amp uh, circuit right now, along with the lights in the room. And the iron takes about 10 amps, it's 1,000 watt iron, so that would probably pop that breaker, but if I plug the iron in to the outlet in the kitchen, it keeps it off of this outlet and this breaker, so nothing should happen, but we'll see. And if everything stops, if I start going offline, then you know why, because I, I popped the breaker. Okay, so you have to iron that flat like that. Oh, can you see that? Yeah, let's get this. Now this, I then I bought this. I bought the iron at a thrift store. The steam part of the iron, if I remember, leaks. So I just don't bother with that. I just use this to spray water onto the piece and effectively create my own steam iron and not worry about whether the tank and the iron leaks. So we're gonna fold the other seam up like that. The other side up like. That that. Get the iron down on it. <clears throat> and you can probably hear the hiss of the water boiling under the iron. I guess the iron set all the way up to wool. I'm thinking that this is uh, either cotton, maybe cotton. It doesn't melt like some polyesters. If you go too hot, the polyester ends up melting and it ends up with a glob. And yes, I have had that happen in some of my work, and it's not very pleasant. So, fix the sides, fold it under, and now it's time to do the ends, like this. Oh. 
Oh, whoop, that, whoa, whoa, whoa. I, that almost. If you feel the iron start to stick, that is not move really, that could be a suspicion that you're starting to melt the fabric. This may have some polyester in it. So I'm going to turn the heat down a little bit on the irons. You know, a lot of this is guesswork because when I buy the fabrics at the um, rag finery here in Bellingham, oftentimes the material, the bill of materials for the fabric is not available. So I don't know what the heck is in the fabric. So, um, I have, yes, I have, because of that, I have, yes, melted my share of pieces of fabric. And that's why, by the way, normally when I'm making my own clothing, I do not use the iron. I do my pressing by hand when I'm doing lap seams on the garments. This is an exception because I am creating a patch to do an emergency repair of a rip in a shirt that I really don't want to uh, dispose of them. By the way, when I dispose of clothing, I don't throw it away. What I will do is, first of all, clean it. I have it cleaned. Then, drape it gently over the bus stop bench, about eh, 200, 200 yards from where I am sitting right now, and, most, and I'll put free on it. I don't even, actually, I don't even have to do that. I'll just put it out there and Somebody will probably take it. Most likely in within a, I did a little experiments. I put a um, clear plastic raincoat I made that I ended up outgrowing. I put it out there at, um, <clears throat> I put it out there in the afternoon, okay? And I thought it would be gone the following morning. Well, I had to go out again that night. And that was about two hours after I put it out. It was already gone. It was already gone. Then now, I also, I mean, one of my hobbies is electronics. And some of you may know, ugh, I had a dead um, audio, I don't know what it was, audio oscillator or some sort of signal generator, TV sweep, uh, TV sweep signal generator, something like that. And it went dead, it died on me. And I decided, okay, I didn't have time to deal with it. And I don't really need it that much because I decided I would not go into TV repair. It's just not worth it. So. I put it back together as best I could, put all the screws back in, cleaned it a little bit, made it look really nice and presentable, and I took it out to the same um, bus stop bench, and I carefully put it down on the uh, ground to the side of the bench, and that was about, oh boy, that was about 10, 10 o'clock in the morning, came back into the house, took a nap, got up at noon, and went out, and it was gone. The oscilloscope, no, the signal generator was gone. Then another time, I had about three plastic raincoats that I made. I thought somebody would want them at an, I thought they would be bought at a charity auction, but they had too much stuff and they turned them down. So I said, okay, well, let's do a little charitable. So I took, the, they were brand new. I just made them. They were brand new. And, um, I took them out there and in a bag, in a um, matter of fact, interesting irony, I put them out in a clear plastic garment bag, okay? And I hung them on the back of that bench, okay? And that was at nine o'clock at night. And then I went home, went to bed at seven o'clock that morning when I got up. Usually when I get up, I go outside and see how the weather is and walk around the grass in my bare feet to wake myself up. And at 7 o'clock that following morning, um, all of them were gone. The whole thing was gone. So somebody out there. Now, it's interesting. Um, yes, they were gone. So I was keeping an eye out. If I could see anyone wearing them, they're quite um, quite unique and they're noteworthy and they're, they're quite obvious. But I did not see them being worn here in this town, that was uh, two years ago, and, and uh, for the past two years, I did never saw them <coughs> being worn. So I don't, know, I don't know where they ended up. So uh, let's see. This is the second of the two patches, which now I am pressing from the top side. I've already 
pull it under. Let's get this closer to the camera and the light. You can see it. Um, so if, if there's anything that's got any life left in it for anyone, I will put it out at that same location or somewhere in town. Now, um, I had about four clear plastic shower curtains I was going to use to make some raincoat, but I decided I was, the, the plastic was too thin and light. I could not return them because I bought them online from um, Walmart. So I said, okay, why don't we just put them out? And there was a local homeless camp nearby, and I figured they could use them for tarps. So what I did, because of concerns about COVID, I didn't want to go into the camp. Several of the people there were not wearing, properly wearing masks. And this was long before the uh, vaccines came out. So I figured, okay, for safety's sake, let's not go into the camp to leave those uh, shower curtains, but find a place nearby. So what I did, I was riding my bicycle to downtown Bellingham, and the, at that time, the camp was at City Hall. And by the way, now I'm done ironing, I'm going to turn the iron off and I'm going to unplug it, just for safety. Um, you don't rely on the thermostat of an iron. It never turns completely off. So now, these are, these have now been pressed. So as I was saying, the homeless camp is at City Hall on my way, I believe I was on my way to, uh, to the co-op uh, or the Spark Museum, and I brought them with me, so I dropped, I draped, I draped the four clear plastic shower curtains on to the railing of the, let's see, let's see I draw, draped them over the railing of the Piddick, well, they used to call it the Piddick Bridge, but they renamed it because Piddick was a slave owner, um, the Prospect Street Bridge, which is right across the street from, how was it, the courthouse, I believe. So I put it right there on the railing of the bridge. That's the bridge that goes over the downtown waterfall. Beautiful waterfall right in the middle of downtown Bellingham. If you ever come here, visit it. Um, it's one of the few, few places in the country where we have a real, wonderful, roaring waterfall right smack downtown. So I draped them over that railing, the, the um, stone railing. That was at 10 a.m. on a Saturday morning, I believe. No, Saturday, Sunday morning at 10 a.m. There were four of them, four clear plastic shower curtains. Um, I rode my bicycle back the opposite direction. Um, one hour later, they were all gone. So, what I didn't need, obviously, was needed by others. So, I... Uh, he's a really wonderfully direct charity. So now, we're going to head over to the sewing machine now. And let's see, I've got to press the right button for the right camera. That is my webcam. There we are. <clears throat> there is the sewing machine. Let's see, make sure the microphone. Hello, hello. Right, move the microphone over a little bit. Okay, now, here we are at the sewing machine. Now, this is going to be tricky. Because I do everything by eyeball. I don't believe in me I don't believe in pinning and measuring and all that stuff. Especially in a case like this, because I don't know if this is gonna work. And if if it doesn't work, I'll do the best I could. If it doesn't pass my um, requirement for fashion taste, then this will end up in the donation. Uh, it probably at the um, but the bus stop bench. So let's see. Here, if you can see it, this is the portion that's ripped right here. I see it. I go this way. I'm going to move the thing like that. Okay. Here's where the rip is right there. Here's the top of it right there. So I'm going to sew the top right against this, which is part of, I think that's part of the yoke. So I'm going to sew the top there, so the corner there, and then, no, no, so I'm going to grab one of them, and it's going to go something like this. So that's going to cover the part that's ripped. Okay, so we're going to start. I'm going to and by the way, the machine is an industrial machine with automatic starting and stopping. What I just did was press the main pedal backwards. That lifts the foot, okay? 
So that allows me to line things up best I could. So what we've done here, I know you can't see, but you know, the camera and the light and stuff are terrible. Let's try that. Can you see that? Oh, man, you can't see that. I'll bring this thing closer so you can see it. All right. Here is the junction between the shoulder piece here and the main center of the back right here. So right there at that junction, I'm going to lay the corner of the... Yeah, actually, do I want to do it that way? Hold on. I might have blown it. But, uh, let's see. No, actually, it's the corner right here. Uh, do I want to do that one? Oh, boy. We, we may have... Uh, Okay, we're going to do this. I'm going to press it right against the corner with the green and the blue and the plaid meat. So I'll put it right there. This is the corner of the patch right here. Put the, the foot right over that. And what we're going to do, we're going to do a top stitch right at the edge. Remember, this is folded over. Top stitch that down. We don't have to worry about securing anything because we did a fold over. And I really don't have to worry about um, double seaming because this doesn't really have any stress bearing at all. So, okay, I'm going to start that. Now, this is where it's going to get a little tricky. I'm going to try to put equal tension on the, on the patch as well as the underlying garment along the blue, something like that. I'm going to top stitch that down like so until we get down to the bottom bottom of the patch okay something like yeah uh, let's see something like that okay that takes care of one of them now i'm going to do the mirror image on the other side of the shirt which is going to be right here um this will keep this will of course facilitate the um symmetry that i love in my garment. So we get the blue, it's gonna be right in the middle of the blue, so it's gonna be something like this. It's gonna be within a quarter inch of matching the other side, knowing darn well that somebody standing, you know, 10 feet from me on the street would not see something that's a quarter inch misaligned from side to side. So I'm not gonna be, I don't have to be a fastidious as I was when I first learned how to sew and I didn't realize that it didn't matter. So let's see, that is going to be something like that. I know you can't see that very well. Let's see. Again, we do a top stitch on the patch, lining the edge of the patch against the edge of the blue on the garment like that. And we're going to just stitch right on down the line, something like that. Okay. Ross. Okay, then let's do this, like that, and like that. And now we have the same side on both of them. Now, here's where it gets tricky. Uh, this is going to have to go all the way out to here. So we're going to do, we're going to turn this around whoops, without knocking the camera off the table. This is why I need another camera. I need a camera with a high with a high um, telephoto, so I can put it on a, on a tripod away from the table, so it doesn't get pushed around by me moving my uh, work around, because right now the camera is literally in the way of my work. So some, once I save up, I'm gonna have to do something about that. So now we're stitching along the top of the patch, something like that. We did, okay, we did this side. Now you notice, I do only one piece for each one at a time. So that will help get the symmetry and if there's any problems, I can catch them right away. So we just did the top piece on the on the, the other side. We're gonna do the same thing on this side. Now this is where the rip is right there. So I'm gonna be really careful to stitch, to keep that stitch on the green here. That's not ripping. That, if, if I don't, then the whole thing is all for nothing. So, let's see, something like that, one, two, all right, get along there. And one thing I didn't mention about this machine that's really nice, okay, when you get to the end, get to the end of the stitch, like that. Now, on a normal machine, you manually bring the needle back up, and you have to pull it out and then cut the fabric, 
fast thread, thread manually. But with this machine, all I have to do is press the foot pedal backwards. What that would do would cause the stitching to quickly go back and forth to anchor the stitch, then a thread cutter will cut the thread. That's going to happen real fast. Let me see if I really can't. Hang on, see, can I bring this? No, I can't. Let's it's, it's not bother with that. Yep, it's, it's going to go. Watch carefully. Went back and forth very quickly, and then that's it. So now, that's that part is done. All right, we got the top and one side is done on each one. Now, here's where it gets tricky. The tear is right here, so we're going to have to, this is going to be a little bit, oh boy, this is going to be really tricky because we're in a sleeve, which is curved. I'm going to have to kind of fudge things up a bit. We're going to have to stitch down the curved part of the sleeve in a straight manner just to cover everything that is torn. So it's going to be something like that. I know it's crazy, but this, it still will add some life back to the garment. So it's going to be something like that because the entire orange fabric is no good. So we're going to do that. It's going to be some puckers here, but we're going to have to live with that. So we're just going to stitch, do a top stitch down that, knowing it's on the blue fabric, which is not torn, and keeping the pink fabric, which is torn, completely under the patch here. So it's going to look something, oh man, something like, uh, like that. Okay, so we got side number three on that one. Now we have to repeat the process on the other side. Back over to here. Let's see that. Okay, so we're gonna do is make. Oh, one thing we have to do is to make sure that nothing gets caught under the machine. I've had that happen. Um, I want to actually check on the other side. Did I make any mistakes? It looked like. Fortunately, I did not. That nothing that was not supposed to be on the machine got caught under the machine. That looks okay. I almost got all this here under the machine. So you don't want to do that. So you want to make sure this is pulled tight. Um, let's see, right here. This is where we're going to start right there, at that corner, right on the corner of the patch, knowing that the patch is folded over one half inch underneath. And we're going to go along, just as we did on the other side, we're going to go along the blue fabric, keeping the blue under the machine, something like this, but we don't want to allow the pink to be stitched because that is what's ripping. So we're going to keep the vulnerable fabric completely under the patch. You know darn well that's going to continue to rip. So we go down. It's going to be ugly. It's going to be a little bit ugly, but it's still going to be wearable before I'm, you know, when I'm through. So I'm going to try something like this. Try to keep all of the pink under the patch, something like, something like that, okay, now, that's side number three on both sides, now, side number four, it's going to be a little tricky, this is the bottom, okay, this is going to, you notice it's the fabric, oh, darn it, the camera's moved a bit, so, oh, boy, this is going to be hard to see, but the fabric under the patch is longer than the patch itself. We, we're going to have to do some pleating under the fabric, something like this. I know it's going to look like interesting, but we're going to have to live with it and get some life back into this garment. Okay. Now, let's see. So now we do something like that. So that completes the patch on one side, okay? And the orange and the pink fabric is completely covered. Okay, now, uh, we do the same thing on the other side. Which is right there, okay. We're gonna pleat it just like we did before. Something 
like that. So this is the bottom. Again, the fabric underneath is wider than the patch, so it can be pleated. Something like this. Then this whole thing will be top stitched over something like that. Okay, now we're done with those two patches. Now let's see if this is even going to be wearable. So let's do this. We're going to hit the main camera, which is. Let's see, we need to hit that switch there. Nope, wrong button. Let's see, try that one there. We can go to webcam and we go to this one here. All right, here I am. All right, now here it is. Here's the back with the two patches. Okay, now. Okay, and let's see how this looks and how this feels. It's tighter. I may not. Oh, shoot. Okay. It turned out. <laughs> okay, let's see what went wrong. So let's move the camera up like that. All right, let's see now. Now, we're wearing a shirt under it, so let's see. Let's take this off. Actually, I'm going to check, check for a comment. Hold on. Hold on. Now, let's see. That looks okay there. Okay, everything looks okay there. All right. Then nothing went wrong there. Okay, I'm going to do a quick sound check and make sure I can, everything can hear me. Okay, turn that off. Get rid of that. Now, um, we might have blown it because it feels awfully tight and I thought I felt or heard something rip when I did this. So let's go ahead and see if I can model the thing. Uh, let's see. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Okay. See? It's too small. Darn it. Okay. Which means the puckering I had to do, I've lost too much rest to the shirt. So now, with that happen, <laughs> and that, see, what ripped? Let's come over here, get this over here, that over there, and we get off of here. Okay. All right. So, Okay, so let's bring the other camera up. All right. So let's see, this is the work I did. Let's see. So this here made it too small. This made the shirt too small. And likewise on this side, and we caused some more tears here. Okay, and and the same thing almost about to happen here, so that's going to have to be stitched again. So, that did not work very well. So, I now, let's see, the, this would have to be re-sewn here. Oh, my gosh. Okay, and that's, see, that's already been, oh, boy. Let's see, what I would have to do, <laughs> I would have to make this, I would have to make this wider, okay? That's gonna be really tricky. I'd have to go down there and make something like this, okay, to make that wider. But then I have to repair this here, okay? So that, hmm, okay, that one and that one are shot. These are barely okay. What I may end up doing, can I? No, I can't do that though. Oh man. Okay, we're gonna have to replace this with a patch. We have to replace this with a patch and replace this with a patch. Once we do that, then we're gonna have to play again. Gosh, I hate to do that. That's a beautiful piece of work here. We have to play some sort of game with this to create like an arch, okay, where this whole thing can come apart and create more room. So, we're gonna start by Doing the easy stuff first. Patch here and patch here. 
So with that being said, we're going to put that aside. We're going to have to find, let's see, this looks like it might be appropriate. So let's take, cut this in half like that. And cut that, and cut that down there. That creates two pieces like that. And that looks really good. We're going to cut it. Yeah, that's already been cutting this. So you cut it that way. All right. And cut it along there, I'll say about there. All right. Okay. Now we're going to do is press these there. Fold it back under just like we did before. So we're going to get the ironing board back out. <clears throat> Okay. We got plug the iron back in. And by the way, if you're doing if you're using this, you're using this, the wheel cutter, and you are using an iron or obviously a portable sewing machine. You don't really want to have electrical wires on here. Now, I have to be careful because right here, you can't see them. I got my video switch and my sound mixer right there, which has a whole bunch of wires. The problem is, this is a razor blade. If you roll over that, like over a piece of wire, it will cut into the wire. I was making a shirt one time when I was living in Seattle, and I forgot about that, so I rolled this, like this, over the power cord, on <laughs> the sewing machine. And <laughs> that was the end of that project because the, the spark happened right all but on the shirt because the power cord had, I think it was a cord for the iron. Okay, it was this here. Ended up on the garment like that. See how the cord goes over here? And I ended up doing something like that. And it shorted up big, huge puff of sparks, and that was the end of that project. So you got to be really, really careful. Now, okay, you got to be careful with this, this, and that do not mix very well. <clears throat> okay, also, beware. This and clear plastic don't mix well. I, I get a clear plastic shower curtain that was kind of kind of all folded up and wrinkly and I thought I could try to iron it. Nope. It ended up like a melted glob and I was told later on that stuff is toxic because it's poly polyvinyl chloride which is got which is got the chlorine atom in it and it breaks down into chlorine and something else. And as we all know chlorine in concentration is toxic. So that was not very good. Um so I keep the iron and my rain gear uh, away from each other. So here's that, pull that down, and iron it. And same with polyester. Polyester also has plastic in it. It makes you wonder what kind of chemicals are in the polyester, and is that going to be toxic when I overheat it and melt the polyester, which is what I did with too much heat on the iron. Now, right now, I got the iron is set to wool, which is not as quite as hot. And I don't know what this fabric has in it. And what, one thing I do when I'm ironing them now, I make sure there is still some moisture in them when I'm through ironing them because that gives me a clue that the temperature is still under 212 degrees, which is the boiling point of water. Combustion usually doesn't start until around... 400 something degrees. So that's kind of a ballpark philosophy that I have when I'm messing around with the iron and stuff that's made out of polyester or a otherwise known as plastic. So, and of course, also my rule of not using the iron at all when I'm doing original construction of my artistic clothing also can. Help. So right now, again, we're only making patches. So that, that, like that, this. Now, needless to say, my favorite pastime with sewing is original creation. 
doing patches is not as fun for me as doing an original, creative, new garment. That's the whole magic of this whole hobby. It's making a new garment completely out, you know, as a new creation. Let's see. That one, I can still, I can hear the water boiling, which is nice. And now I keep that good and pressed. We're just going to press this under so that when I stitch it down, all I have to do is the top, top stitching. If, once it's top stitched, like a patch, if I wash it and the creases and the pressing I did is lost, no problem. If the top stitch is going to hold it, hold the crease. This is really only, should last needs to last only as long as it takes for me to get this down and stitched down by the machine, just as I did with the other patches. So it doesn't really matter how fine I do this. It's just got to last as long for me to get it stitched down to the main garment. Now, we just did that. I'm going to hit, I'm going to turn this over. Let's see, so that's a bit too hot. Oops, come on. Get, make sure that's under. That's a bit too hot. I'm going to add a little more water to it. All right. So you'll see the steam coming up, which means this whole thing is still less than, 200, less than 212 degrees. And uh, at most 112 degrees, and still less than 400 degrees for the combustion. So probably still safe from burning any um, polyester. Okay, we're done. We can unplug the iron. Okay, so that's that. Set these aside. Um, let's see. Then set the ironing board aside. Now we're going to go back to the sewing machine. I'm going to figure out the right camera for that, which is webcam. There we are. Okay, now, get those out of the way. All right, so what we're going to do now, we have to stitch. We have to now cover these paint patches. They're, rip, they're starting to rip on both sides. So, I'm going to take this. We're going to line this up on the green because the eye is going to be... Well, actually, no, this is the front. Now, this is going to be interesting. Because this is the front. This is the side. The eye is going to be focused on the front. So let's line this up here. Line the patch up here on the boundary between the pink and the striped fabric, but let's get it on the striped fabric side because the pink is vulnerable. So something like that. We're going to overlap the pocket just a tiny bit so we're anchoring on the pocket and not on the pink, it's under the pocket. So we're going to start right there. And I know, yes, yeah, see, can you see that? You can see, to get this out of the way. I think you can see that. So we're going to just stitch down the line on that side, making sure that the folds are under it. See, once this is done, then the crease I made with the iron here doesn't matter because it's now secured by the stitching. That's all I care about. Get that. Okay, so that one is now stitched. On that side, we repeat the other. For the, repeat it for the other side, which is going to be way the heck over here. So we're going to put that right next patch. Find it. Oh, there it is. Under that thing over there. So the next patch is going to go right here. This is the opposite side of the shirt. We're going to start on the yellow like that, off of the... Actually, no, wrong. We're going to start on the striped fabric right there. I almost made a big boo-boo. Okay. And it's going to go above the bottom edge of the pocket, something like that. Put that under the machine like that. Let's see if you can see that. Oh, let's see. Can we get closer? Let's see. 
You know, it's so hard to do this. Okay, how about that? Is that any better? It's a tiny bit better. How about if I do that? No, I can't. I don't have the... And there, you are. how's that? Can you see that? I think you can see the foot right there. Okay. We're going to start on the way down like that. Staying on the gray stripe. Do not, not venturing on the pink fabric, which is susceptible to tearing. So something like that. Okay, that's that side. Now, let's do the top on this side. So again, we're going to do this. We're going to stretch both of them. We're going to stretch the bottom of the pocket and the side, and where it meets the side, something like that. So, let's just stretch this like that and something like that. Now, that ended up on the, on the paint, but hopefully that a small enough exposure shouldn't make any difference. So we got that, the top done on that side. Let's go ahead, go back to the other side, which is, I'm gonna find it, let's see, right here. So here is the top of the other side, okay? Again, we're going to stretch, we're going to start right there at the corner, like that. Now you notice with this machine, when I stop stitching with this machine, the needle is down, okay? Which means I can pull all I want here and will not slip out from under the foot because the needle stops down. This is different than many home machines because many home machines, it can stop anywhere. It depends upon how the clutch is in the motor. This has got a solenoid that, you know, this has got circuitry in it that knows when the needle's down. It will stop strictly when the needle's down. I'm going to show you just by doing one stitch. You notice, it always ends up down when I stop the foot. So that's great because that allows me to put tension on it without worrying about it slipping out from the foot. Now, okay, darn it. I didn't mean to do that. I should not have stopped the stitch. Okay, but the next thing I do is the down stitch. Whoop, whoop, whoop. I knew that was going to happen. That's the price you pay for having the camera right here. Okay, I'm going to now go out down the other side like that. Okay, I'm going to start it. Stop for a while, get this lined up. <clears throat> now we're going to stay. I mean, actually, these are lined up. What we're going to do, we're going to line this up here. So now we're on the green, we're not on the pink. The pink is completely under here. And oh, shoot. Um, let's do that. So the pink is completely under here. The fabric that's ripping is completely under that. So let's go right on up, right, like that. Something like that. That's side number three, okay? We stop it here. Now, let's... I come over to here. Find, find it. There it is. So, we come over here. We can do side number three on the other side, which is right here. Something like that. So, let's... Get started on the top of it right there like that, okay? Now, we want to try to stay on, actually, it doesn't matter. We can just go down here because we're off of the pink. The pink is way in here. We're going to cover that. It's okay to be on the green if the pink is falling apart. So we're going to cover the pink up. That's side number three, okay? Now, we're going to go directly on the side number four. Now, watch what happens. What's neat about this machine. I'm at the end of a stitch. I want to turn, but not take the stitch off. So if I push gently backwards in the pedal, without going all the way back, but that will cause the stitch to end. Push gently back on it. The foot comes up, but the needle stays down, okay? And so it allows me to turn, a right turn. Now I'm ready to go in the other direction by pushing this the foot forward just as normal. Now I'm at the end. Now if I push the foot backwards all the way, this is where you'll see it. You go back and forth and end. Cuts the thread and end. So we get the patch done on that side. Let's go back to the other side. Okay. All right. Again, we're going to start it at one end. We're just going to do a simple 
stitch across the bottom like that, making sure there's nothing else under the under the um, machine. Go across like that. Okay, that's the easy part. We got the patches done. Let's see. Let's go back over the, here. All right, let's go back to the camera here. Well, that's funny. Something happened. Oh, okay. Now, all right, what I'm going to do now, I'm going to put this on just to show you what I've done is patch. The patches I just did are right here. One here and one here. Those came out fine. So everything fine so far except it's too small. So I'm going to try to cheat and create an opening or like a pleat in the back to open up the body of the shirt so I can still wear it without ripping it. So this is going to be tricky. So bear with me. And also, I'm, I need to warn you, I may not be able to finish this today. We are at 623. <coughs> Bellingham Television complains it is more than an hour and a half long. And we're at close to an hour long right now. So they, we only got a half hour to do this before Bellingham TV complains. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to take this. Now this is, whoops, I'm going to get it into the light and the camera so you can see it. I'm going to go to the, let's see, the button's right there. Okay, now, I don't really want to spoil this. It's a beautiful piece of work. I'm going to, now here's where it gets a bit tricky. I want to preserve this as much as possible, although that's ripping right there, darn it. I'm going to have to, see, what we're going to do, we're going to make a loop here, like that, and then we're going to have a patch, which is a much wider loop, and we're going to create additional width here, maybe about six inches to allow me to get into the darn thing. So what I'm going to have to do, I'm going to make a cut. Now, this is going to be one of those things you've got to cross your fingers twice before you cut, measure twice before you cut. Um, can you see that? Yes. I'm going to make a cut, and I don't, I'm going to do it with the scissors because I don't want to bump right here. If I'm not careful, I'll bump the roto cutter into the foot of the tripod to hold the camera from which you're watching this video right now. So we're going to start right here with a pair of scissors and we're going to cut up. <clears throat> I can't, they're right there, right in the middle of this. Boy, I'm just so sorry I have to spoil this darn thing, but and then we have to do, because we're going to do a curved cut. We're going to cut a curved, actually, you know what? I don't have, to, I can do this. I'm going to pull this. Since I've already cut this, I can now, knowing that this is now far enough away from the foot of the tripod, I can now use the roller cutter to cut a curve, something like this. Now, this is all new. This is a whole new adventure for me. So, I don't know what's going to happen to this. All I have to lose is time and a small bit of fabric. Okay, knowing that if this fails, I'll just take a quick little trip to the bus stop and leave it. So, okay, now, that's cutting it. What I'm going to do now, and unfortunately, I forgot to put the camera at the L. Let's see. The next thing I have to do is run it on the serger. And I don't have a camera at the serger. Let's see. And I don't have a microphone. Oh my gosh, I don't have a microphone at the server. So let's get the let's get the iron out of the way before I end up melting something. And let's get the plug for the iron out of the way before I short things out. Um, I'm gonna swing one of the microphones. Oh, actually, no. Let's do this. I'm gonna grab the camera, the little camera, like this. And I'm going to focus it up over to here, which is on the serger. Now, this is, normally I would have a special camera for the serger, but that's a crummy camera. I had nothing but trouble with it. And I'm going to have to invest in another camera for the, the focus on the serger. That's going to be something like that. I hope that's right. 
Uh, let's see. Let's see what's that. Okay, now I'm focused. Uh, let's see. Why is that? Let's see. Hey, okay, that is too bright. Oh my God, the contrast is too, too darn much. Okay, you're just going to have to live with that. Okay, now, we have, that's the camera. As long as that doesn't fall off the table, I'm going to swing the microphone over so hopefully you can hear me yak away when I'm sitting at the surgeon. Okay. Now what the surgeon does, that's what's called an overlock machine. That will prevent the edges of the cut from fraying. Now, you know what, can I, how is it? Oh, you know what? I'm going to do this. Yeah, now you can see a little bit better. Okay, now. Okay, what we're going to do, we're going to surge right around that cut, that loop that we just made. Start right here. I know you can't see this. What it can do is going to create a stitch that wraps around the edge of this fabric. Now, this is a real mess because some of this fabric is already fraying. And some of it is so darn delicate. See, the problem with these fabrics is, is that these darn mills, the companies that make the fabric are called mills. Some of these mills are, they don't appreciate the fact that some people use their fabrics for clothing and it needs to be durable to be used for clothing. Now what's that? Um, what really bothers me is that some fabric which is billed as upholstery fabric which is made to be sat upon by many people on a chair, a piece of furniture, actually will not withstand being clothing. I had be in clothing. I had a pair of shorts at one time that I made out of upholstery fabric. It came from the upholstery section of the fabric store. So I know darn well it was made to be used on furniture, which is what people sit on. But it, I had I wearing the shorts on, I think I was on my bicycle. Now this was in Portland, thank goodness, it was not here in Bellingham. And the short split open at the rear, okay? Fortunately, I was wearing underwear, so things were okay, but it was mighty embarrassing. And that is upholstery fabric. I called the mill to complain to them, hey, you're making this fabric to be used on furniture, made to be used to be sat on by many people. Yet, I made a pair of pants that are worn only by one person. And it came apart in a very embarrassing way. But that is not very good at all. Um, they all but hung up on me. I mean, they were not very polite at all. Let's see, Let's see how that looks. Now, phooey, it's not very symmetrical. But we're going to have to live with it. Okay, so... We got the thing surged. Now, what we're going to do now, I'm going to now take the camera. Whoop, what just happened? Oh, the ironing board just fell over. Okay, so we're going to take this. Okay, we're going to do this. Without messing around, we take that. Zoom back out there, yeah? Right there. Something like that. Hello, one. Hello. Yep, they can hear me. Um, Let's see. Let's see now. So here is the opening that we created, okay? It's not very symmetrical, but we're going to have to live with it. We got a surged opening. Now, we're going to make an, get another piece of fabric, and we're going to make it shaped something like that, okay? And it gets sewn in, and, but it will create an opening that will uh, hopefully allow the shirt to fit me better. Okay, so we're going to have something like this. We're going to take this away. All right, now let's find a suitable piece of fabric. At this point in time, let's see, it's not that one. I don't want to use a really good piece of fabric because I don't know how long this thing is going to last. So I'm going to leave out the really elegant fabric. Let's 
Let's see, how is that? Is that... Let's try, let's try this. This is former early Elegante that may have gone past. It was cheap. It's a poultry fabric, probably for a dining room of years ago before furniture fashions changed. So let's go ahead and use it. It's black and white flowers, just like your black and white TV set. You know, oh, things have gone Times have gone past. Times have long ago, or whatever. Okay, so let's get this flattened out, something like that. Now, what we're going to do is that flattened out. Now, we don't want. We have to be careful. We don't want to roll. Oops, we don't want to roll the roller onto the. Um, what happened with the camera? Oh, my camera's getting all out of adjustment. We don't want to roll the camera onto the um, video switcher. I'm, just, I'm sorry, we don't want to roll this. See, right over here, that's the video switcher. If I accidentally roll this over to there, that might ruin an $1,800 piece of equipment I just purchased for the purpose, purchased for the purpose of doing the live streaming of my clothing for your benefit. So that is, I have to be careful with that. So, the switcher, and right next to the switcher is a $400 sound mixer. I don't want to roll the roller cutter into the mixer as well. And you want, knowing my luck, I'll end up doing that. So what I'm going to do, I have to do this in two stages. This is... This is where it's going to be. I'm going to cut this pretty much the same shape. I'm going to cut this like this. And then you notice that this will create additional width to the back of the shirt, which hopefully will allow um, the shirt to fit me. Now, if it doesn't, then it goes to the bus stop. Okay. Um... See that? Okay, something like that. Now, let me just check one thing. Is everything all right? All right. Hold on. Hold on. Somebody made a comment. Hold on. Hold on. Okay. I see a comment from Ufi on watching on YouTube. I have an idea. So, why don't you go ahead, type your idea, and I'll take another look at it. It might be using, maybe not necessarily for this garment. But maybe for another one. But let's see what you have to say. I am watching the chats on Restream. Now, sometimes Restream gets in a bad mood and misbehaves, especially if it senses that my roller cutter gets anywhere near the video switch or the computer or the sound mixer. Okay, so I'm going to be real, real careful. So here's a cut I'm going to make. Here's a curve at the top. It goes all the way down. The ends at the bottom. Now this is going to mess up the lining, or not the lining, but the shape of the bottom of the garment. But really, I don't know what I can do about that. We're going to have to live with that. So let's move this up a little bit more. Something like this. Make sure there's nothing under here. Like that. Okay, now. And we're gonna have to worry about the bottom later. Okay, so get that like that. Okay, so now I'm gonna take the roller cutter. Okay, I'm gonna cut along here, and obviously I don't want to cut my finger. I've done that. Yes, I've done that before, especially in the earlier days of this wonderful hobby. You have to take it slowly, and you keep your fingers far away from the cutting, even if it means making a bad mistake. I'd rather make a mistake than cut myself. Okay, so now we cut this part of the loop. We have to move the whole thing up like that, because now, at least now, I avoided cutting into the either the video switch or the soundboard or the computer. Okay, so if I cut into all three of them, the computer was a thousand dollars. This is the computer was seventeen hundred dollars. The video switch was 
$1,600, and the sound board, I believe that board was about $400, that's $1,700, that's uh, $3,700, $3,300, that's $3,700. Um, I would have lost if I willingly rolled the roller into the video switch, the sound mixer, and the computer. So that would not be very nice. All for one shirt that could still end up at the bus stop? No, no way. Okay. All right, that's that. That part's done there. All right, let's do this. Okay, you can get up like that, 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 that. Okay, now, that's that. Now, here, okay, that's that. So we can get rid of, we can set the shirt aside. Now, I'm going to move this up like this. Now, we got to figure out what to do about the bottom. I'm going to make a harebrained decision. Got a little extra there. I know I'm going to be mismatches when I do this thing. Like that. And I cut this into a curve like that. That should drape into a straight line, just like the curve of a full-blown curved skirt. So this is the piece I'm going to use, okay? This is the leftover of that piece of fabric, which is still got plenty left over. I'm going to cut out the scrap, which is this. Throw that away. There. Now, we're going to take this. This is the main, this is what's left of the fabric. And it's got plenty to be used for something else. Maybe more patches, okay? We, this is, uh, what, $2 at the uh, at Rag Finery. So it's a darn good find. It's pretty nice fabric. Even though it's a bit dated, it still would be very nice furniture. A heck of a lot nicer furniture than some of the junk that we're seeing now, especially in schools and bus stations. So, but that's a whole other thing. Okay, we're going to do now take camera... Focus it back onto the server. The surger, I have to go back to the surger now. Like that. And we're going to go to that camera like that. So we're back to the surger now. Now, oh boy. So we're going to surge everything here. Okay, go up there. Just, again, this prevents the edge from fraying. Okay. This, we're not doing a patch now. I'm not going to do any pressing on this. This has become an integral part of a revised garment. It's not just patching over a piece of the garment that's ripped. We're creating a new part of the garment. That's why, let's see, I'm not able to turn that corner very well. Can I do it that way? Yes. By the way, this is an industrial surger. It can go a lot faster than what I'm moving. And it can go through a lot heavier fabrics than a typical domestic or home surger. And I'm a lot less likely to break the needles in the industrial surger than in a home surger. I started with a home surger, and I went through needles like no yesterday. This machine now is five years old, and as far as I know, I have not broken any of the needles on this machine. And this surge through everything including, yes, including towels from Goodwill when I made my shorts and my jacket out of Goodwill towels, which I do wear out and about here in this town. And you will see me, especially in the cooler uh, months of the year or cooler evenings, wearing my towel shorts and my towel jacket riding my bicycle. <laughs> if you see that, you're more than welcome to stop me and say hi. So, let's see, we got this surged. I'm going to cut out the, the um, trimmings on the serger, serger. Okay, so that's done. We're going to put the cutting table camera back to where we found it. Get this back out like that. This goes back down, something like this. Let me check that to really check the focusing on it. And now let's see that. that. Get the zoom all the way back out, and then we flip this around, something like that. That goes back to where we found it. The microphone goes back. We are through with the surgery for now. You know, that looks 
Oh, uh, let's see. I gotta move that back up a little bit. Something like that. Okay, so we're back to here. Okay, that looks okay for the cutting. Okay, that's okay. We're gonna turn the figure off. All right, so here is the insert that we just made here. Okay. Let me look at the comments. Hold on. What are we saying? Okay. All right, nothing. Haven't seen anything yet, and we got it. Okay, now let's see. Let me do a quick. Okay, let's see. Oh, let's see. What happened to that? Okay, right there. I do need to check the sound. Sometimes the sound will break down and not go out. I had, uh, I had complaints of no sound for about two, three hours, two hours. So let's see. Do I hear anything? Come on. Do I hear anything coming off of this thing? Oh, you gonna press that one. Okay, that's. Hmm. Yeah, I hear myself. So we don't care about that. We can put that away. Okay, now. So here's the insert, and here is the shirt. Now, so this is going to go something, something like this, okay? So... I have to figure out which is the good side here. This is the good side here. The good side is the good side. I'm going to make a hairbrain guess. That's the center. We're going to start stitching in the center right here, okay? That way, if there's any problems, it'll be symmetrical and not forced to one side. That's why I always start in the center. So let's get everything out of the way. Get everything off. The scissors out of the way. Get iron out of the way. Okay, everything's all set there. So let's go ahead. we got to hit the camera on the sewing machine like that. Now, I will probably, I will warn you, most likely that camera is going to be pushed all around because there's going to be a lot of fabric flowing around. Let's push the camera back. I know you won't be able to see much, but hopefully, uh, okay. Here's the shirt, okay? You can see it. Here's the center of the back of the shirt right here. We're gonna start the stitching right here. Okay, right there. Now that's the good side. You can see the good top stitching on either side of that. Now, here is the centerpiece that we just created. Now, uh, actually, the, the good side of this darn thing, actually, the good side is here. This is the good side. So this gets flipped over. The center of this, we're gonna match with the center of the shirt. Now, this may not be perfect, if it isn't, but so what? At least it's going to be wearable, and it'll just be uneven at the bottom. We can take care of that later. So, start here, and because of the tight curve, we're not going to use the full one-half-inch seam allowance. We go down to about three-eighths of an inch seam allowance for the center back, and we use a shorter stitch. Now, if you probably, I know you probably can't see that. See, I just started stitching. Now, we have to take this real slow because of some really tight curves. Do a few stitches. Lift the foot. Remember doing that. You can do that automatically just so we can get the two layers lined up on either side of that like that. And remember, the needle stays down when the automatic the foot is automatically lifted. Okay. So you go right down. And now we're getting a little bit off of that tight curve at the top. Um, now it's a little bit easier to go down. We can do longer strokes. And okay, now we get to another curve here, like that. No, you can't see that. Actually, let me try this. This may not work, but okay. Um, that's, yeah, this convinced me I'm going to have to get a different camera, one with a really long, tight telephoto lens, and get the darn thing away from the machine and the machine table. The, this machine table, with all this has to remain clear. There's too much, a lot of my work, especially the, lar the large clear plastic rain cloaks I've made. Be, this would be completely busy. I would not be able to have any camera anywhere on this table. Um, fortunately, I don't make too many of those. Uh, they, they are not practical for riding the bicycle. They'll get caught in the derailleur gears. 
And I like the dress style coat that I made, and it seems to serve the purpose. I went through a phase where I had about, I love to make the long cape, and I had about five enormous, heavy, clear vinyl cloaks. Those were sold at a charity auction, about $150 a piece, and that was it. They went to a good cause. Now, oops, I might have made a mistake here, but let's see how far how we get. Okay, we're down to one side now, and it appears, woo, we almost, we just met right at the same place on the bottom. I was worried that the center back would have been too short, which means we would have had to cut back on the hem on the main garment, which I really didn't want to do that. But that looks okay there. So we've done one side of the back, and now we're going to go back to where we started at the top. Now, being really, really careful. Now, we're going to have, oh, we're going to do it. We'll be on this side of the machine now. we we'll be inside the machine. We're going to start about oh, right there. Get some overlap right there. Like that. Okay. All right. And we're going down the other side now. You notice, now if you look carefully, this is starting to rip right here. So I'm going to do a little detour in, which will cause a bit of a mismatch on, on the other side. But hopefully, it would trap the area that's starting to rip. To be inside the seam allowance and not in the garment itself. Let's make sure that the collar is not under. I'm going to lift the needle if I can. It looks like. Okay, let's do that. Okay, yes. This is an awfully tight curve. You have to be careful. If you press the foot backwards too far, you're going to end the stitch. There's only a small amount that you can press the foot backwards. You lift the needle. So we're going to, unfortunately, have a bit of a pucker right there, but I need to go outside of that darn torn area. Keep that inside that seam, something like that. Okay? Now, <clears throat> I think we're beyond it. Well, now we're going to pull this around like that to get the two edges lined up again. Now we're beyond the curve, and the journey should be a little bit easier now. We're going down that side of the opening in the back. Okay. All right, come on now, all right. Okay. Now we get the curved parts, now we're down to the easy part, okay? We're beyond all the tricky curves, there's nothing torn here. We're beyond the delicate fabrics. Now there's still other places where this shirt can tear, but hopefully with this change we're gonna remove a lot of the stress that would cause the tearing. Now, let's see. Now, it looks like we got a little problem here. Okay, I'm going to get the camera over to here. Now, here's the insert. Here's the shirt. It looks like we're running a little short on the back of the insert. So, um... I guess with this, that's going to be a hard thing to do. Now, can I play some sort of game? <laughs> um, if I pleat this, I cause an unevenness in the back of the shirt. If I make this bigger, I'm going to cheat. I'm going to start. I'm going to come down to about... Uh, let's see, come down to about, now I'll say about there, I'm going to end the stitch. Okay, now, I'm going to have to create additional length for the 
center back. But before I do that, I've got enough done to see if this will fit. If it doesn't fit, then it's not worth it. So, we're going to go back to the main camera, which is here and here. I'm on the main camera now. Now, I'm going to put this on and see how it feels. Okay, it does fit, although it feels kind of funny. Okay, but at least it fits. Okay, now, what does the back look like? I can't see it, but I don't see the monitor. Actually, I'm going to do this. I'm going to move my image so I can see it on a monitor while I'm turned away from the camera. So we're going to go all the way. Okay, come on, monitor. Hit it. Come on, come on. Okay, let me do that. Make this full size if I can. I guess I can. Okay, so can I see myself? Now, the delay. <coughs> there we are. Is that what the back's going to look like? Something like that. Okay. It looks funny, but at least it fits. And you know what? The bottom of the back is below the belt line of the shorts. So that, I might just darn well forego that and recut the bottom of the other side without making it longer. But that's going to be tucked in the pants. So at least I think we've got a salvage. Okay. I'm going to verify it right now. I can button it down. It feels a little funny at the top. Okay, but I'm going to button the shirt down. Yes, it does fit. The worst torn areas are now covered. Okay, we're secured here. And we're secured back here and in the back. Okay, so, get plenty of room there. Now let's, and remember, I'm, fitting, I'm wearing this over a shirt. So let's go ahead, tuck it in. And we got plenty to tuck in the back. So this could be a dress style shirt, not one that's left draped. So yes, it's worn over shirt. We got plenty of room there. Um, the back is going to look a little funny, but at least it fits. Now that monitor is so darn small. Yeah, that's fine. It, that's fine. I approve of that. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take it off now. And yeah, it's uh, an hour and a half. Six, it's an hour and a half, and we are we are still got a little bit of time. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to have to, it's an hour, darn it, it's over an hour and a half. And we're getting darn close to the limit. So what I'm going to do, instead of trying to finish this on camera, because, actually, you know what? Uh, I can strip down the first minutes I had on standby. So I'm going to try to finish this online. So here, I'm going to go back to the cutting table. I'm going to do here, I'm going to, uh, let's see, you see that? Boy, it's so hard to see some of this stuff. Okay. All right. I'm going to cut this. This, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to cut this bottom so it matches here. And I'm going to cut it on this side so we, we're symmetrical. Then I'm just going to surge this. And this is going to be tucked in and calling it. Then I'm going to do the top stitch on the back. So let's go ahead, finish this down stitch here. Uh, let's see. We need to go back to the web camera, which is on the sewing machine. Okay, so we got to do, and actually, you know what? I'm going to do. Yeah, that's this. All right, and now I'm going to now do the top stitch. Now, remember, I did one stitch for this. Now, we're going to do a top stitch. This is going to be a double seam for strength. 
So this is going to be top stitched. We have the original stitch here. We're going to top stitch this, keeping this going towards the center because this is multiple fabrics. It's easier to fold a single layer of fabric than the multiple layers of fabric here. So we're just going to do a top stitch all the way around. And we can start this at one end because we've already got the thing locked down with the stitch. We don't have to worry about it um, being symmetrical off the center because we've already achieved that. We can do a quick top stitch all the way around this loop. Something like this. Uh, something like that. Something like that. Okay. Now doing top stitches in a tight curve may be a bit tricky, but let's see how far we can get. You're doing top stitches on the curve is best to doing what we're doing now, having it fold inward because trying to go outward in top stitch may not work because it's stretching. We'll see. Now we also have to make sure that nothing else is being trapped under the foot of the machine. That's happened to me before too. So here we are approaching the curve. Okay, now we have already gotten some stuff trapped in there, but we're going to have to live with that because of the extremely tight curve. So, rub turn here, making sure that the fabric is going under to my right or away from you on the camera. Now, let's do this. Since that's very tight, yeah, let's try to bring this something on. Darn it! The head of the machine keeps getting into the way. So, that's going to be tricky. I'm going to have to get a camera that looks over my shoulder and back of me with a long lens. Then the problem is I back my chair up into that camera, knock it down on the floor, and uh, break a $2,000 camera, which means I'll laugh, wet my pants, whip out the credit card, call b and and buy another camera, and not even bother telling them what went wrong. But they'll probably laugh, too. So, uh, we have to figure that one out. So, let's see. We're back down the other side. We're still just doing a top stitch. Nothing fancy. A standard top stitch to make this a double seam. Oops. Oh, darn it. The bobbin ran out. So, okay. At this point, yes, it ran out way back there. Wow. And always, bobbins always seem to run out at the most inopportune time. Oh, come on. Get that cut off of there. Get that out of the way. I keep an eye on the darn time. Oh, okay. So you can see what I'm doing right now. I'm replacing the bobbin, which ran out. This is the bobbin that just got wound. This machine can wind a new bobbin while you're using the current bobbin. So we take the bobbin that we that's just wound up. This goes into the case. Let's see. That goes. See that goes. See what that has to go. So it winds. Put it in the case so it unwinds clockwise. Put the thread through the threading slot. Make sure it's unwinding freely. Cut off the extra thread like that, like so. This goes back under the machine where you can't see on the camera, and there's not enough light under there to stick a camera under the machine. Now, this is the empty bobbin right here. This now will go right here. Uh, let's see, we can actually bring this around. All right, there is the... Okay, so we're going to thread the empty bobbin. With, we have two rolls of thread on the machine. One to feed the machine itself, one nothing but feed the bobbin. So we wind the thread around the bobbin like this. And we take this and put it on the shaft right here. When we cut the excess thread that I've been using to wind it, and we engage the clutch like that. So when we start sewing, this is going to start winding. The bobbin. So let's go back to where we were, and let's go back to where we were on the garment, which is, yikes, way up there. So, okay, turn this. Uh, 
Well, let's see now. All right, let's see now. And then that, and around, around in circles, and a spiral, and a wheel. Ending or beginning, getting all around, wrapped up in circles. Now, sometimes with a tight curve like this, the fabric would want to go the wrong side, but there's nothing much we can do about that. Okay. I have to make a sharp turn here. You notice I lifted the needle, but it did not end the stitch. Now, we got a whole bunch going over to the wrong side. I think I've got it there. So we're just going to have to go like that. It doesn't matter really if a small amount goes in the wrong side. It's just that for the most part, if you get most of the seam allowance on the correct side and stitched down, the seam can be considered secure. And considering many purchased garments only use a single stitch, and I told you about the example of the $900 jackets at Mario's. So, So I would not be the first one to use single stitches. I try not to, because they can fall apart. Adding that second run of thread that I'm doing now adds a lot of strength and time, durability, to the work. And the only time anything of mine falls apart is that when the fabric itself falls apart, as the case here, not with any of my work falling apart. Okay, so what's going to happen, this would probably, oops, whoop, 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 oh, I pulled that aside. Oh, what about that? Again, that's the problem with the camera on the machine table. If this breaks, that's the fabric. I've never had anything break here on my own stitches. Now, what we've done is we've done, I'm going to go to the other camera. Okay, I want this camera. All right, so what we've done here, you can see the bottom. Okay, I'm going to do, you know what? Okay, this has been surged here. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to cheat. I'm just going to do one cut here, surge it, and call it it. Because this will be tucked in. I'm going to take this. I'm going to do that like that. Okay, and actually, you know what? For symmetry sakes, let's do the same on the other side. No, that's gonna yeah, do the same. You know, come on, do the same here, like this, and then around like that. And we're gonna surge those and call it done. So that's all gonna be. That's all gonna be tucked into the pants. Okay, so it doesn't have to look perfect, even if it's hanging out. It doesn't have to look perfect because it's still gonna be better than half the store bought junk. I was telling you about. I, if I wear a $900 jacket with the hem literally blasting apart, this is nothing. I mean, this is this is quite mild. Okay, to have a few things go wrong. Okay, let's see. What does that look like? That looks like it's done. Let's pull back in there. Pull back. There's the surgery. Okay, you turn the microphone over so all you folks can hear me. I'm just going to research the bottom. Okay, like this. All right, so what I have to do, again, you know, you, I know you can't see this. Uh, and I need to get a better, that's another investment I need to get, is a decent camera for the surging. Because you gotta get up close to it, but again, the issue is you can't get in the way. That's the frustrating thing. You have to get up close to this stuff. But you don't want to get into the in the way of either the machine or me, the operator. That's the frustration. Okay, around there. Okay, we're going. This is the centerpiece we're surging now. We're going back to the side pieces, and we're just going to go as far as the remainder that was already surged, something like that. And now we're surged. It's going to look ugly if you're wearing it, but. I plan to wear this inside my pants. So, with that being said, let's do one final check of it. I think we're done. Um, Faith, I'm going to turn the surger off. I'm going to switch 
turn the main camera, move the microphone back. We're on the room camera now. Uh, let's see. Oh, wait. You know what? I forgot the damn camera light. I didn't realize it was going to so, so late. So let's put this on. All right. Remember, I'm wearing this over a shirt. Okay, so let's do this. I can probably zoom this camera in a little bit. Oh, okay. Now, how is that? That looks okay. I can. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and button this up. Like this. It's going to feel a little tight here, but remember, there's another shirt under there. Okay, and I'm too modest to go bare-chested on my public cameras. Okay, so there. There's the shirt. It's buttoned up. It fits fine, even with another shirt on under it. And turn around. Go to the back. It's a little bit bulky, but that's fine. It fits all your... All the um, torn stuff is covered. And tuck it in to the pants. We got plenty of tail to shut the tuck in. And even if we don't, I can always add to the tail. That doesn't take long at all. But here we are. We're tucked in. Okay. The fitting seemed to be okay. Okay, that seemed to be okay there. And let's see, I'm gonna look at myself on the other monitor. That, that looks okay. I'm going to consider this done. We're already hard up against the time limit imposed by Bellingham Television. And I think we're going to call it it. Now, again, this was the emergency repair for a shirt. I was able to salvage it. It will not go to the bus stop bench, at least now. There are still some pieces that may be vulnerable to tearing. Right here, maybe, and right here, maybe. But with the changes in the fitting, hopefully that will be mitigated. The issue also is washing. I mean, you have to think about just tossing it in the laundry. You may end up having, with these shirts, with this delicate um, tapestry fabric, we may have to do a machine wash in the sink. I don't know. That's going to be an interesting thing to do. At least we've recovered. We didn't lose anything. And I hope you enjoyed the show. And I hope that I've inspired you to be able to do this kind of thing instead of just throwing it away. So, until next time, I don't know what the project will be. I, you know, I could be another shirt, a new pair of pants. I don't know. But what I do know is that if you see me on the street, you're welcome to say hi. And of course, I love you all. Good night.